A ton of personal data is collected about us every day through our phones, computers, televisions, smart speakers, anything that's connected to the internet, as well as things that aren't, like credit card purchases, for example. We don't have a lot of control over much of this data collection, and we often don't realize when or how it's used. That includes how it may be used to influence us. This is the Digital Prepper, and today we'll be looking at data privacy and why even though you may have nothing to hide, you do need to care about how your data is handled and how it can be used to control you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you do like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness or just preparedness in general, do leave a like, comment, and subscribe to get more like this. Let's get started. The collection of data from individuals can be used to influence them as well. For example, this can take the form of an ad targeted to your purchase history online. It could also take the form of a recommendation to watch a YouTube video, depending on your watch or search history. Internet platforms like YouTube use artificial intelligence to deliver personalized recommendations based on thousands of data points that they collect about us. This includes your behavior across YouTube and Google's other products like your Chrome browsing habits. On YouTube itself, it does get extremely detailed where they look for where you scroll down a page, which videos you click on, what's in those videos, and how much of them you do watch. All of this is logged and used to inform increasingly personalized recommendations to you, which might even be served up through autoplay before you can even click away. This AI is optimized to keep you on the platform so that you can keep watching ads and YouTube keeps making money. It's not designed to optimize for your well-being or satisfaction. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other platforms have the ability to push content on their users that the algorithms tell them that those users want to see based on the data that they have about their users. The videos that you watch, the Facebook posts, and people you interact with the tweets that you respond to, your location, all of these help build a profile of you, which these platforms algorithms then use to serve you even more videos or posts or tweets to interact with, what channels to subscribe to, what groups to join, and even what topics to follow. You're not looking for any of this content, it's looking for you. Now, this is a good thing, when it helps people find harmless content that they're already interested in, like memes or entertainment, for example. And in turn, it is good for those platforms themselves because those users spend more time on those platforms. However, for people that are easily influenced by certain harmful content, it's not good. But for the platforms, it's good for them because those users spend more time on them. That's what the platform's business model is, and it's a very profitable one, and they have no desire to change it. Now, even though those platforms have become increasingly transparent about what user data they do collect over the years, and most of them have given users some control over what data is stored, they are very restrictive about how their recommendation algorithms work. That being said, they also have fought attempts to stop tracking when it's not on their own terms or haven't acted on their own policies forbidding it. Overall, it is pretty much impossible to stop any of these companies from collecting data about you. Even if you don't use their services, these companies still have their ways to track and collect data on you. What you can do is at least limit how the platform's algorithms use your data against you. For example, Twitter and Facebook give you reverse chronological options where basically the tweets and posts from people you follow show up in the order that they're added rather than giving priority to the content and advertisements that they think that you're most interested in. YouTube has a incognito mode that says that it won't use your search and watch history to recommend videos, but do take that with a grain of salt. There are also private browsers that you can download and use to limit data collection and prevent sites from linking you 
to your past visits or data via cookies. Or if you do wish to go to the extreme, you can stop using all of these services entirely and basically get off of the internet. You might have more to hide than you think. If you did like the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas or suggestions for more videos, or if you want to share your experiences with prepping, leave a comment down below. More digital prepping to come.